You know when your friend asks you to go thrifting with her and there's really nothing you need to purchase, so you tell yourself, I'm just gonna go browse. Yeah, that didn't last long. Check out this beast. Did you see how much this costs? 34 freaking dollars. I mean, did somebody mark this wrong? No way. But it's got keyholes. And look, they actually lock. These drawers are kind of cool. It has the original dividers. It's actually not in bad shape. Solid wood, there's no veneer on this. What do you think? Should I get it? I say yes. I say that's a steal of a deal. After getting this piece home and being able to inspect it in natural light, the damage became a lot more clear. The scratches on the top of the dresser were a lot deeper than what they looked in store. These heavy gouges along the edge of the dresser were also pretty nasty. Kind of looked like somebody took a knife to it at some point. The drawer pulls were not complete, but in my opinion, they don't look like they match this style of dresser anyway, so I don't think they're original. I love that it had the dividers in the top of the drawers along with the original locking mechanisms and brass keyholes. I thought that was a really cool feature. Obviously one of these legs had been attempted to be repaired at some point. If the crack wasn't apparent, this leftover Gorilla Glue is. Overall, being that this piece was 100% solid wood, I knew it had great potential to be something awesome if just given a little bit of love. And for the sticker price of only $35, I knew it was completely worth trying. I think it's funny that these pulls don't look like they match the dresser style, but they also don't match each other. Some of them have backers, some don't. This one has a big bump in the middle. I removed the keyhole cover by gently prying it out with a small screwdriver. This will be put aside, polished up before it's placed back in. And then I also decided to remove the locking mechanism just by gently lifting it with that same screwdriver until I was able to get a hold of it and then wiggled it out the rest of the way. Now all this stuff was pretty rusty, so I used my favorite metal rust remover. You don't need much of this. One of the drawers had some dividers in there that weren't original, and I didn't like the way they looked, so those also got removed. Now this piece was really dirty. It had a weird sticky residue on it, along with also being visually dirty, so I cleaned it off with a TSP mixture and a couple different sizes of scrub brushes. But when I started to wet it down, you can see all of this brown gunk just kind of dripping off of it. And it had a really intense foul smell. <laughs> so I knew wiping off the TSP solution with just a clean water was not gonna cut it. I had to rinse this thing. And after I rinsed it, I scrubbed it off and I rinsed it again. Now this is kind of an extreme measure and I don't recommend doing this to furniture on a regular basis. But in this situation, keep in mind that this piece was only $35 and it was a risk I was willing to take because if I was not able to remove the smell off of this, there really was no reason for me to move forward. Luckily, I did not damage the piece. I got most of the smell off. It was very faint at this point, but while it was still damp, I decided to spray it with vodka, just pure vodka. And then I left it out in the sun to completely dry and the smell thankfully dissipated. After this dresser survived the power washing experience, I was able to move on to a few minor repairs on the rest of the piece. There were a few glides that needed to be set back into place, one with a small crack, which just required a little bit of wood glue and a clamp. There were also a few cracks on some of the faces of the drawers, and I also took care of those right away before I started to try and remove the finish.
One of the drawers did not survive the cleaning process. In fact, it fell apart. So here I am just re-gluing it back together and then just clamping it back into place. Now, it may look completely square to you, but something I like to do on drawers especially is to glide that bottom part back in while it's still drying and just leave it overnight. That way you can make sure that it is completely square in the morning. The bottoms of the drawers were the only part of the stressor that weren't solid wood. They were actually veneered plywood. So I just handled them with a little more care, gently scraping off the excess glue and then sanding them down with 220 grit sandpaper. The rest of the drawer got sanded with 120 grit and then I gently worked my way down to 220. Here's where I started to get excited about this project. I was able to finally start seeing a glimpse of that beautiful natural wood that was hiding underneath all that gunk and old finish. I haven't got as much done as I would have liked. I do work on call for my regular job and I am on call right now. The top two drawers are looking great. And before I can, you know, finish sanding like the sides and the top of the dresser, I want to tackle the legs. Now the two front ones are carved and it's going to be really difficult for me to sand that or scrape. So I figure I'm going to try soda blasting. I think I have enough time in this little window to get that done and cleaned up and out of the way and then I don't have to worry about it again. So I got my dust mask here, I got my eye protection and we're all set up. So Remember when I was cleaning this piece and there was all that red gunk just dripping off? I believe a lot of that red gunk was actually dye. And this is the reason why I chose to use drier methods of finish removal rather than using a chemical stripper is because I wanted to contain as much of that red dye as possible so I could properly remove it. However, soda blasting ended up being a complete fail. Look how much just ate away at that finish. I've never had this problem before with soda blasting and I think the reason here is because that wood was just so much softer than that exterior coating. So once a little spot of finish got removed, that underneath dry old wood was just so much more vulnerable. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have tested this out on an inconspicuous area first. But like I said, I've never had an issue up until this point and I'm still learning as well, guys. So you live and learn, right? To remedy the situation though, I decided to go with my Dremel and a grinding bit to just very slowly and very carefully even out anywhere that got gouged by the soda blaster and then remove as much of that leftover finish as I possibly could. Using the sponge sanding pads on my surf prep sander helped out just a little bit, but pretty much the rest of it got hand sanded. Those of you who have been refinishing for a little while will probably totally get this. The more you do this, you'll notice that you probably start collecting certain things. Casters are something that I always just hang on to in case I need them. You know, whenever you have a vanity or something that is, you know, maybe missing a couple 
or needs one or you upcycle a project where you don't need them anymore I hang on to them for situations like this and I was able in this case to find four that fit perfectly now going back to this old repair it isn't pretty but it is extremely sturdy and as I look into this hole, I can tell there are a lot of pieces on the inside that are missing. And I'm thinking maybe that's why they use Gorilla Glue, because Gorilla Glue tends to expand. So rather than trying to pry this part and set it back into place, risk creating further damage, I just decided to fill in those gaps. I used my own homemade wood filler for the outside so it matched the wood perfectly. And then on the underside, which is not going to be visible, I used Bondo because it's a lot stronger. Now sometimes you kind of have to weigh out your options here. This is an older piece and it's definitely not going to be without its scars. Moving on to the top of the dresser which I saved for last because it's one nice big solid flat surface. I started off with a carbide scraper removing as much of that finish off as possible so that I didn't gum up too much sandpaper. When it was time to get into sandpaper I went in with 80 grit. And I stayed with the 80 grit sandpaper for a fairly long time because I was also trying to get through a lot of those heavy scratches. The heavy sanding did work miracles on the top of the dresser, but as far as these gouges in the front, it did very little. There was just so much wood missing in parts of them that I knew I was going to have to trim it in some way. I thought about maybe just kind of slicing off like a quarter of an inch all the way off the front, but I figured I might as well do something decorative. I first considered using my roundover bit, which I use a lot of my projects, but because I had this really large gouge specifically in this area, I knew I was gonna have to use something that was gonna take off a little more wood than that. So I opted to use this Roman OG bit. And what that bit was going to do is it was going to remove a lot more of that ledge and give it kind of a rounder shape at the bottom. I was so happy it did exactly what I was wanting and added a little more character to the top of this dresser. I just had to finish sanding all the little crevices. <laughs> more hand sanding, I know this video is so much sanding, but it is absolutely necessary when you're trying to restore a piece to a, a nice wood finish. I used all of the tricks that I had up my sleeve. I have a little scraper here with a little pointed edge that I used to kind of pick out as much of that thick finish as I could. And then I finished off with a scraper <laughs> wrapped with some sandpaper to really get in there in the little tight little grooves. And yeah, just a lot of elbow grease. And then also, you know, my surf prep sander with a really thick foam fine sanding pad to just kind of give like the finishing touches. The last bit of sanding I had to do was sand the top of the dresser with 300 grit sandpaper. So to achieve this, I used my favorite vintage sander I have. This is a Rockwell half sheet finishing sander. I first learned of this sander after watching one of John Bear's YouTube videos. He has one of these in his shop and he swears by it. So when I came across one on Marketplace, I scooped that guy up immediately, took it down to my local repair shop. They installed me a brand new cord went through it, cleaned it all out. Of course, I'm the one that painted it pink because it needed a new paint job and why not? But this thing purrs like a kitten. It works so well. It leaves a buttery smooth finish. I wish you guys can feel this. It is awesome. So don't knock vintage tools, guys. Vintage tools are great. As far as finishes go, there's a couple routes I could have taken, but I absolutely love the original Odie's oil formula and felt this was a great opportunity to try this super duper everlasting oil. I live in a very dry climate and a lot of the furniture I get in tends to just be very brittle and stripped of its moisture, so at some point I knew I wanted to try this product. This was the perfect opportunity not only because this piece was very dry, but also because it is a softer wood and I wanted something that was gonna penetrate those fibers deeper than the original formula to not only add moisture back in, but to add strength and durability. I love how easy this product is to use. You just have to work it in 
in small amounts with a non-woven pad, let it sit and do its job for a couple hours and then come back later and buff it off. I find it so rewarding when you're putting on a finish and you can finally start to see the beautiful color of that wood popping through and all the variations in the grain patterns. It's just, yeah, it's, it's honestly the best part. <laughs> Now this on the other hand is not the best part. This is the buffing off of that oil. I waited about two hours and then just buffed it all off. I like to use this Howard's Feed and Wax and these two dedicated brushes on the inside of my drawers just to add a little more moisture. I use the larger flat head brush to really work in the large flat areas and then for those little tight corners that I can't reach with that brush, I use the skinnier brush. This product does need to be reapplied every so often, but once fully absorbed, it is not greasy and it smells wonderful. I found this particular hardware off of Amazon. I chose this style because I thought it kind of mimicked the legs. It wasn't the right color, so I just spray painted them gold. I also spray painted those little tabs that were on the bigger drawers and just installed them back into place. They made a huge difference. After a nice long soak in that rust remover, these locking mechanisms were looking beautiful, so we had one more quick stop. Whenever I can, I love to try to get these locks in good working order, so once they're fully de-rusted, I take them over to my locksmith around the corner. I've taken many projects to him in the past. Sometimes I have to leave him behind and he works on them for a few days, but sometimes I get lucky and a generic key works. I want to see if you could possibly um, find me a key for these. After a quick little look, he determined a skeleton key was all I needed and I was on my way within a couple minutes. I know this has been a long video guys, but we are nearing the final stretch. Thank you so, so very much if you've stuck with me this long. If you have watched it all the way through, please leave me a green heart emoji in the comments and I'll know that you watched the entire video. Before I give you the final reveal, let me remind you what it looked like when we started. Seem to have the time, but when it's hard, you just grow cold up. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires, fires around ourselves. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires, fires around ourselves. It's deja vu. times set up a stage of lies say we're done say it's over 